Welcome to Lamora's Cards and Horrors, the best store for all your gaming and haunting needs. I'm Matthew and today I'm going to be helping you along your journey into CDH. If you know nothing about CDH whatsoever, I recommend checking out this video here to cover some of the basics before coming here to help you get a better understanding of the format. This video will assume you already have a good understanding of Magic the Gathering and the Commander format and are looking to take your first steps into CDH. I'm going to be going over the main archetypes you'll see in CDH, some of the most popular cards that will be impacting most of the games you play, and popular lists in each of the major archetypes. Generally speaking, there are three main archetypes or speeds of CDH that decks fall under. These are Turbo, Midrange, and Stacks. Turbo decks seek to win the game as quickly as possible, aiming to be presenting wins as early as turn one, but more often on turns two and three. These decks look to use a combination of fast mana, card draw, and tutors to piece together early combo wins before other decks are able to stop them. Turbo lists may be for you if you enjoy fast and powerful, high-risk, high-reward strategies, want to draw huge amounts of cards and play a ton of spells in a single turn, or are interested in big combo turns that can test your skill and deck knowledge. Mid-range decks look to make impactful plays at all stages of a game, wanting to start quick but able to grind advantage in slow games as well. Typical lists look to develop utility creatures and other permanents early in the game that allow them to accrue card and mana advantage until they're able to go for a win condition. Mid-range lists may be for you if you enjoy versatile lists that have a chance to win almost any game, want to build an advantage over the course of the game until no one can compete, or are interested in getting to use the highest quality cards in this powerful format. Stacks decks look to slow down the game so that other decks are unable to play their strategies effectively. Typical lists play backbreaking effects that stop opponents while leaving themselves still able to win through either combat or a combo finish. Stacks lists may be for you if you enjoy controlling the pace of the game, want to play a slower, more methodical strategy with game warping cards, or are interested in navigating complex board states and learning to counter your opponents properly. These archetypes effectively make up the rock, paper, scissors of the CDH meta. Each are powerful in their own way and have their own strengths and weaknesses. This all sounds good in theory, but let's take a look at some of the specific cards each of these archetypes utilize. There are many staple cards you can expect to see in a variety of the most popular lists, but a few of these cards have had an especially warping impact on the game with a large amount of decks built around using them as part of their game plan or win condition. Fast mana artifacts like the Moxes, Mana Crypt, and Soul Ring tend to see play in most decks. Because of this, Dockside Extortionist is one of the most powerful ways to immediately get a huge influx of mana from other players' mana rocks. It may seem like primarily a turbo style card, but it's so overwhelmingly good at creating a quick advantage many mid-range or even stack decks that can run it choose to. On the opposite side of the coin, cards like Collector Oof and Null Rod are used to attack the format's reliance on these mana rocks and treasures. Though these are used mostly in stack decks and some mid-range lists that rely more on mana dorks and less on artifacts. Thassa's Oracle, commonly referred to as Thoracle, is the win con of choice for most decks in the format right now. It combos with many cards, but the common combo is the A plus B of Thassa's Oracle with either Demonic Consultation or Tainted Pact. At just blue blue black, the Thoracle Consultation combo is the most efficient in the format, and is played in every single blue and black deck on the CDH decklist database. The combo is very hard to interact with due to the Thoracle ability that wins the game being a triggered ability, and typically requiring a hard counter for the consultation or tainted pack to stop the combo. And this not being very punishing for the player comboing makes it a very easy include in all the decks that can run it. Underworld Breach is another powerful win con that allows players to perform infinite graveyard loops with many cards most commonly using Lion's Eye Diamond with Brain Freeze to fill their own graveyard for the escape cost and then milling out their opponents for the win. It can also often be used though to piece together a win with cards you've previously played like Rituals and Tutors to power out a win with very few resources in hand. 
Ad nauseum, also referred to as ad nause or just nause, can be thought of as a one card win condition in CDH. It takes advantage of the very low average mana value of cards in the format, as well as efficient mana rocks and combo pieces we've mentioned, allowing players to cast an ad nause, draw dozens of cards, and then piece together a win from there. This is the defining card in most turbo lists, and it is frequently one of the scariest cards you can have resolve in a pod. As you may be able to tell, Grix's colors tend to be very good in CDH with their ability to play lots of cards in a turn, tutor, hold up interaction, and present many overlapping combos. Due to these factors, rule of law and other cards with rule of law effects, cards that impose a one spell per turn limit, are very popular for stacks builds. Very few non-stacks decks can win with an effect like this in play, making something like a turn 1 deafening silence absurdly strong in a pod with many turbo players who have effectively just had their decks turned off. There are many other cards you'll want to familiarize yourself with, but these are some of the most significant that make an impact on each game and you'll want to be ready for. Now we'll take a look at some of the popular deck lists in each archetype that you run into or that you may want to try yourself. One of the most popular turbo decks in the format is Blue Farm, a deck that uses the partner pairing of Timna the Weaver and Krom Ludovic's Opus in the command zone. This is a four color ad nauseum list that uses the best cards available in its colors to look for wins either using Thassa's Oracle or Underworld Breach. While it is a turbo list, it is on the slower side of the archetype and can often use its commanders to grind card advantage over the course of a game. This is a list that can really do it all, and is a great example of the power and consistency the top tier decks in the format have access to. Free counter spells, card advantage in the command zone, incredibly efficient win cons, the best cards in 4 colors. Blue Farm is a great place to start in CEDH. Another popular but very different turbo ad nauseum strategy is with Corvold Fakers King. Not just a menace and casual, Corvold Treasure Storm is a very fast Jund turbo deck that leans into the synergies Corvold has with Dockside Extortionist to make a ton of treasures, turn those treasures into card draw with Corvold, and put together a win through many different lines like Dualcaster Mage and Twin Flame, Witherbloom Apprentice and Chain of Smog, or even using Praetor's Grasp to take one of your opponent's combo pieces for the win. This is more of an all-in strategy than something like Blue Farm. Here you'll be using fewer pieces of interaction and worrying less about value and instead focusing on progressing towards a win as quickly as possible, ideally before any other deck can stop you. This is a type of list that will often be presenting wins very early in the game and keep going for those wins turn after turn. Moving on to mid-range, we have another powerful casual commander with Yuriko the Tiger Shadow. Yuriko is a very powerful commander that provides card advantage, gets around commander attacks, and serves as a potential win condition if left unanswered. Because CEDH decks tend to use their life as a resource so much, the damage off of Yuriko triggers can quickly begin to pressure your opponents. Surprisingly, Yuriko is such a powerful card that CEDH lists can often resemble casual ones, just with more of an emphasis on efficiency. You'll still be utilizing ninjas to attack your opponents, but that'll be backed up with cheap interaction, stacks effects that don't hold you back, and the use of combos like Doss's Oracle and Demonic Consultation. Yuriko Temple is an excellent deck for CDH that will still let you play a ninja tribal, combat focused build tuned up to the max level. It's a fairly straightforward deck, but with a high skill ceiling that you'll be able to take advantage of as you grow as a player. Another popular and powerful deck is Midrange Najila, led by Najila the Blade Blossom. A combat focused build with lots of interaction pieces, it plays the highest quality ramp, protection, tutors, and draw engines in 5 colors. This deck looks to win either by performing a 1 card combo with its commander with cards such as Grim Hireling, a backup combo such as Thassa's Oracle plus Demonic Consultation, or traditional combat damage if needed. Najila's ability to create warrior tokens that then make even more warrior tokens can quickly get out of hand in slower games, and you also have the option to utilize Ad Nauseum to find combo pieces and protection to end games quickly. This is a very flexible list with lots of different ways to win, and often considered one of if not the best deck in the format. I have to mention the current queen of stacks, Winota Joiner of Forces. Winota is an absolute powerhouse, providing free card and mana advantage off of your attacking non-humans putting into play great stacks and combo pieces from your deck. 
Winota is a deck that quickly snowballs out of control, often establishing a stacks piece or two and then using Winota to build an advantage of stacks pieces until a combo like Kiki Jiki and Zealous Conscripts can be used or just by naturally winning through combat. Winota Snowball Stacks is an excellent place for a new CDH stacks player to start as her ability gets around all her common stacks pieces and lets you build an unstoppable board while other players are unable to develop their game plans. She nearly single-handedly changed Boros from a joke of the format to a tournament menace and is a blast to play. Last up we have Blood Pod which uses the partner pairing of Timna the Weaver and Tana the Bloodsower. This list looks to tempo out the best hate pieces it can each turn to get ahead while keeping opponents behind. Unlike a lot of stack stacks, Blood Pod isn't necessarily trying to fully lock opponents out of the game, but slow them down enough so it can get to the point where it's able to utilize its Birthing Pod combo lines. While expensive, they provide consistent wins and functionally work as one card combos as you can typically use your Timna to begin the chain. While powerful, the deck really rewards strong knowledge of the list and your opponent's game plans. So keep in mind that you may need to put in some extra work to get the most value out of it, but if you do, you may find it's a deck that you don't ever want to put down. CEDH is a very diverse format with many different viable strategies. It may take you a bit to find exactly the right deck for you, and I strongly suggest a multitude of different decks to see what you enjoy. And don't feel any pressure to play perfectly. No one will have unrealistic expectations of that. It's okay to make mistakes, to ask for help, and to not fully know what you're doing. We've all been there and we'd all love to help you as you get into this format. My advice would be to pick something here you think sounds cool, check the primer of the deck list and try a few mock steel goldfish play tests to get a feel for it, and then find a game in one of the many online communities on Discord or Spelltable. Jumping in there is the best way to learn. In the description below, you'll find links to each of the deck lists I mentioned as well as to the very useful resource cdh.guide, which I would highly recommend checking out. If you found this video useful, consider liking and subscribing. I'll be doing some video guides on specific deck lists soon that you may want to check out. Also, if you could, consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can get cool perks, commission altars like this, and help me make good stuff for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching, and go learn to play that deck you love.